Welcome to the 831 podcast, Living Your Best Life. And this week, the World Alpine Ski Championships are happening in Italy. So I'm kind of excited about watching the Alpine Ski Championships. And I decided I would talk to people that made a difference and helped me in my ski career. And so this is kind of a tribute this week to Alpine Canada, which is celebrating its 100th anniversary. It's been around for 100 years. And I hope that you will enjoy listening to the podcast this week and the people that have made a difference in my life. Our parents question, and we are going to continue on the road that we started last week of dealing with the questions that parents or coaches have asked me. And our question this week is, how do you know if you have what it takes to become the best? I used to get that often from parents. Family friends had given us adult-sized boots and old skis with bear trap bindings. I was cleared to do something athletic after 18 months of recovery from my concussion, and we were off to Big Mountain, Montana, for five days. I had skied a dozen times behind the horse and a half ton in four days at Amon's Ranch on the eastern slopes of the Cypress Hills. The only difference between skates and skis for me was the length of the edge. I'd skated since I could walk on the rink between the house and the barn over 5,100 hours. I could stand on the edge and the ski will turn. That was my thinking. An hour of beginner slope and I said, see you later, dad. See you later to my brothers. And I did not see them the rest of the day. I wore a gold fleck Bell Star motorcycle helmet because the doctor said that was the only thing that was approved for me to wear to protect my head. And I think I can safely say I started the ski with a helmet craze in 1965, although nobody really followed me. I like to be first at everything. By the third day, I had figured everything out except how to stop and broke the tips off my skis and had flat tip skis. Another first. I was more afraid of what dad would do than I was of stopping. Day three, late afternoon, a ski patroller grabbed me from behind, yanked me out of the lift line and yelled, I'm taking your lift ticket. I fell backwards and caught him in the nose with my helmet and he started to bleed all over the snow. The ski school and race director, Len Kaufman, heard the noise and watched us fighting and broke up the party, sending the ski patroller on his way to fix his nose and told me to wait. Then he turned to the ski patroller and asked, why, was, why were you taking his lift ticket? Patroller said, I couldn't catch him. And he's either going to kill himself or someone else if we don't get him off the hill. He turned to me and asked me where my parents were. I told him I did not know because I had not seen them all day. He told me to pick him out when he came down the hill and arrived at the bottom and we would have a chat. Dad finally showed up. After a brief discussion, we moved to the front of the lift line. I was on first and once my skis hit the snow at the top, I was off as fast as I could go and thought, if they cannot catch me, I can get one more run. I was hiding in the lift line when they finally caught up to me and said, let's go to the front of the line. This time you go behind us. I had to follow Mr. Kaufman down and do what he said. And the next day, Mr. Kaufman set a GS course on the short T-bar lift and taught me how to run giant slalom gates. I had new right size skis and boots as a result of the action the day before. Because as ski school director, he was standing there telling my father I needed better equipment and he was directing classes and he watched me and my dad and brothers ski. At the beginning of the day, without my knowledge, Mr. Kaufman told my dad the following. I've coached a lot of kids. Some kids think they want to race. Some like to race because their friends do it. Some race because their parents make them. And some love to race. The difference? The first group will make a couple of runs and then go skiing. The second will do it until mid-morning. The third will run gates till lunchtime. And the last group? The racers? Well, they will have to be told to stop. Dad asked how many of those you had. Mr. Coffin's reply, none so far. <laughs> At 4 p.m., I was begging the lift attendant for another run. I never stopped all day. Mr. Kaufman begged my dad to sign me up for the racing program, and after we had fallen asleep, dad said he was going to go meet Mr. Kaufman, and they talked till 3 a.m. at a coffee shop. In 1965, there was no World Cup of skiing. Ski races were classic races and world championships and Olympics. 
Mr. Kaufman knew that Banff, Alberta was the front runner for staging the 72 Olympics, and he said, Mr. Hunter, your son needs to be there for experience at 18, so he will be ready for the 76 Olympics. How do you know if you have what it takes to be the best of the best of the best? The patrolman saw a problem and wanted to squash or control my dream. Mr. Kaufman saw potential and wanted to empower it and bring it to its full development. I've coached over a thousand kids and would never try to predict which ones would become the best of the best because every human being has the potential to grow. But I've witnessed kids who had the potential that were squashed and controlled by the words of others and had to fight harder to overcome the damage of words than the work of preparation it would take them to become the best of the best of the best. My quote for the day, your point of view of someone or something reveals your limitations, not theirs. I'm Jungle Jim Hunter, and you've been listening to 831 Living Your Best Life podcast. I hope I empowered you and inspired you today to become an 831-er. Please subscribe and click on like and let us know how we can help you. My personal challenge for you today is to discipline yourself to see the potential in the 8 to 31 people you will interact with today and be accountable and responsible to empower them to aspire to a higher point of view. This is your 1% challenge today. 1% of your day, 15 minutes. That's all it takes, 1%. Listen to this podcast for eight minutes and then spend eight minutes to dare at least eight people to reach for their full potential. I hope you'll have grown before we meet next time. Thanks for listening. 